have you ever wondered what the life of an instrumentalist is like? Why they play what they play and what drives them? Oh, have you thought about why you love a particular song? Instrumentalists, they give us the best in music and yet we don't appreciate them as much as we ought to. And so, we bring you your favorite instrumentalists and everything that concerns them. Tighten your seatbelts, relax and enjoy as we take you on this wonderful journey of learning and exploration on the Behind the Music Show with your hosts Eza and Lutz Devi. Hello everyone, wherever you're watching from, this is Behind the Music Show. Thank you for loving us. My name is Lutz Devi. And I am Eza. Eza, it's been a journey. I remember, I remember when we started this show, um, we had how many subscribers? I think we were about 10. <laughs> there were about 10 and I remember we, 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 we made noise about it. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for loving us. Eza, you look smart. What's up? When your designer is Rose's touch, this is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> you glow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, wow. It's been amazing. We have seen the comments. We've seen the comments. We've seen the love. You people love us. We didn't know. Yeah, the love is just overwhelming. Thank you so much. Mm. Yes. About, about the... You know, for us, even one person, mm. one, mm. number one like this, yes. counts. Mm. It matters. It matters. Yeah, so yes. Just keep in keep, keep on subscribing mm. and yeah, keep the love coming. We're feeling it. True. Yes, and today on set we have hmm, I think you have already seen him. A man a man I've been admiring. I've I've, I've seen him from afar on TVs, um on 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 on, on music uh, productions like a great uh creations and creatives creatives sorry yeah but i've i've admired this guy like is 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 the is the founder of janzi band my god those guys broke it for me and i've been there looking forward to 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 seeing this gentleman mm. wow you have seen him and his name is sewa sewa mm. <laughs> is that his real name we're going to find out yes uh how did he come up with the name and all that? But yeah, but for me the thing about him is mm. um, how anyone sits down and then comes up with an instrument. Mm. I want to find out mm. how is that possible? Can I do it? Yes, yes. But right about now, welcome with me, um, the only and only Sewa Sewa on the show. In the city, why Rangenze? so excited to be here. When I was reading about you and I read about the Janzi, a lot of questions were running on in my mind. Why did he name it the Janzi? Does it have any connection with a... It's an insect, I think. With an insect, the Janzi, a Janzi, you know, in Uganda. And I'm looking at it right now because I really wanted to see it. I was, I was, I was so curious. It does not have any similarity with the 
with a Gen Z, with a, that tiny grasshopper. So what inspired the name? Why did you even decide to come up with this? Well, Jan's the instrument was named after Jan's band. So Jan's band was my first project. That was uh, in 2009. On my return from my European tour in Germany, I decided to start up you know, a project where I could discuss with my friends and see, you know, share the experience I had in Europe where I met, I walked into a music store and uh, this gentleman asked me, what are you doing here? I say, I come from Uganda, I'm a musician, what do you play? I play the Adungu, what's that? It's a Ugandan harp, hatched harp. Uh, you mean the Kora? I said, no, the Kora comes from West Africa, but in East Africa, Uganda, we have a hatched harp. So we had to Google for him to see and try to relate to what I was talking to him about. But then I came to realize he didn't know about this instrument. He didn't know much about Ugandan music. So on my return back home, that stuck in my head and I wanted to to do something about it instead of just talking about it. So I spoke to a, f a few friends of mine. That was uh, Jackson Kiria, who is uh, in South Africa. He was a saxophone player. Uh, Stephen Owundo, who is in the United States. Uh, Abraham Sekasi, who is still with me in the band, I told them my vision, which they were very excited about, and they wanted to be part of it. So we started to put together, you know, ideas and energy to push this forward, and that's how Janzi came into existence, the band. The band itself has been around since 2009, and I started working on the instrument in 2015. Okay. So the instrument, the name is a project, or a big project of so many names that follow up. Mm. Yeah. So the name Janzi comes from a Janzi, which some of us call the locust, and it flies. We all know that. So I wanted the band's music to fly from one place to another, because that was my first project as Janzi band. But then from Janzi band, I thought of an instrument, which also has a history of its own, how it came into existence as the instrument. But I also wanted the instrument to fly to the world from one place to another, beyond borders. So for me, the idea was to bring my Uganda to the world. Mm. Would you say you have achieved that part of the vision? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I'm, that's still a struggle because I come from a background or a culture in Uganda where, in truth, we've lost so much of who we are and adopted to so much of who we don't and uh, that's a problem because we are teaching our children to follow that trend. That's true. And someone has to do something. Instead of us just talking about these things, you see we're losing our culture, we're doing that. Yes, if you acknowledge that, what have you done? So for me, coming up with the Janzi instrument, I thought I was adding more value and creating more of what we could think about as a country to our children that we could attach value to because some of our instruments have, cro have, have refused to cross borders or not recognized around the world because of their appearance. Mm -hmm. While we do not acknowledge much of them, like, you know, when someone holds their dungu, it's considered local. Mm -hmm. And for me, I want to change that. How do I turn their dungu into a modern instrument that even a Ugandan or a young child feels attached to because this is my instrument there's value to it i'm happy to have this instrument like you see people walk around with a guitar mm -hmm. naked mm -hmm. but they feel happy i want to see people walk around with their dungu naked but that comes with hard work we need to change we need to change the appearance of the instrument to attract these kids to attract the world to that so for me it's a task i chose to take on with a few friends who believe in my vision to see how we can change the history. Mm. Such an enormous task one, but I believe it's also a wonderful one because yeah. truth be told, we really need to get back to the roots. Yeah, yeah because if, if I go to America and I'm speaking very good English, it doesn't make a lot of difference to the Americans because it's English. Mm -hmm. When I go and I'm exporting my language, Uganda, and I'm very proud of it, then there's, there's a difference. And it's easy for someone to know that 
you know she belongs somewhere it mm-hmm. also gives you a sense of belonging of i have yes i've come here but i come mm-hmm. i come from east africa i come from uganda and i'm an african and yes this is what i speak this is who i am mm-hmm. so i the, i think it's a very beautiful vision that you mm-hmm. guys have mm-hmm. and we pray that it keeps you guys achieve what you want to achieve i think it's not about us it's mm-hmm. about all of us as ugandans not just as the town of janzi mm-hmm. but to the entire nation that we need to bring this together to the world okay. because my responsibility is your responsibility mm. if i do something and you don't support me nobody's going to support me out there if you support me we create numbers which numbers those people will ask questions why mm. now trying to find out they join that so for me i think that's that was makes sense mm. that if we can create numbers on our own will attract attention so it's not just your responsibility no. thing we should all take it no home. because i did not create the instrument for me i create the instrument for the nation mm. awesome so yes we have a task at hand <laughs> you have a task at hand um i'd like to find out the name sewa sewa yeah. your name <laughs> uh why did you decide to give yourself that name because most people maybe um you usually you play from the harp family most of the things that the instruments that you play no mm. Okay, most of the instruments are from my half family, but the instrument, the first instruments I learned or my family where I come from, we play drums mostly. So most of these instruments I just learned along the way. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so because most people will say you'll have uh, the, the the instruments that they play, they attach themselves to them and you'll have uh, I'm not saying cutting anyone. This <laughs> okay, let me say X keys. Yeah. or why drums mm. why didn't you take on that and you decided you know what I might be so myself I did not decide mm. the people who love me and love my work decided I've had names there was a time they called me the percussion monster just because of my you know attitude when I was playing drums but then when I moved away from that uh, when I designed the Janzi I wanted to you know pay more attention to this instrument this new instrument bring it up to people I was playing on stage and someone called me sewa sewa just from nowhere and then like the f- it stuck into my head and like sewa sewa so uh, people started calling me sewa 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 and that's how before people called me James and then to the percussion monster and the percussion monster was given to me by a gentleman He's a he's a piano player from Kenya. I was playing with him. He's called Jose. I remember his name. And uh, we're playing on stage because of my character. So he took the entire band, like the audience. Said, no, you know what? There's a guy. He took a bar. Uganda, you have a monster. This guy is a percussion monster. And from that day, people called me the percussion monster. And when I look back into those pictures, I, yeah, I think I was a monster. But then. <laughs> <laughs> I was a monster just you know the way I would wall up those drums are like I, I won't leave tomorrow tonight is is the night but then how people started calling me so that's why it was an interesting name because it was it, it there was relation to my name so what you think James sewa so it could be like a short version of my name I'm like I think I like this I started calling myself so so I think I love it and it's it rhymes with what you play yeah Yeah, so it, it kind of gives you a sense of like he is there and this he has his name and it, it just has a way it relates and connects to the instruments that you do play. Right. So how did your music journey begin? Uh I don't have a clear answer to that but I can tell you I've been playing music from day one. I mean I come from a music family. My entire environment I grew up in was music. So I can't say I have something different I can do better. Music is all I know. it's all i can do music, i can i can describe music in my own way because where i come from that's where we know mm-hmm. so i am music i've been music all my life wow yeah and how has the journey been like for you so far challenging especially in uganda the kind of music i believe you know want to do is not that much embraced here but you still have to find a way how you teach audiences to love what you do mm. which is still a hard one because 
Uganda has, for some years, proved to, to have that one ear, and that's the mainstream, that if you don't do this kind of music, I mean, you can't have a platform. And I believe if we put hands together, we can change that, because music is a wide word. It's a short one, music, but in terms of what style, what genre, what do you play, it's a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. And it's our task to go out there and teach people. People need to know the difference between reggae and raga. Mm -hmm. Dancehall, hip hop. Folk music, fusion. People need to know these things. Mm -hmm. Not many know these things. People fall in love with music, but they don't know what they're listening to. Why? Because we've not set up platforms or individuals that go around telling people. Let's talk about the media, what we give to people. We need to teach them what style are, li are you listening to. So someone knows, I love this kind of music because of so and so. Mm -hmm. Because I wouldn't be happy if you woke up no disrespect, and you put me in a category, Sawa Sawa and John Black. We're two different musicians. Different. If you get me an award, I wouldn't be happy. Because I am winning in a category I shouldn't be. Mm. That's not my kind of music. You know what I mean? Mm. So we need to work on that as well. So people know I'm listening to Sawa Sawa because of A, B, C, D. And this is the kind of music he does. Mm. Wow. Awesome. So we have a big task ahead of us as a country, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to music. Mm -hmm. I noticed you play a lot of, um, quite a number of instruments, even across the continent. Mm -hmm. And we would like to find out how has um, the African music evolved in your perspective? When you talk about African music, you're talking about Africa on the other side. Africa on this side of East Africa, not really. We're still struggling. We don't even know where we're heading. We, I think for me, in my opinion, we're just playing music for music. But we don't have a particular direction as to why we're doing that. And we need to clarify that. Because I love to talk about West Africa because they have showed us a clear direction. Where they want to go, what they want to do. And that's what they have stuck to over the years. And they have documented so well where they have come True. from. True. Mm -hmm. Which we don't do. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, someone holding an atum is looked at as local. Someone holding a kora in West Africa is a celebrity because wow. this is theirs mm. and how they have brought it to the world. You see, I've traveled with the Jans and people look at me like, you come from West Africa? No. Oh, we thought. So for them, they think African music comes from West Africa mm. and we need to do something about it. We, instead of pointing fingers, we need to just work on our acts and do something about it. Awesome. I'd like to find out, do you have a man cave? A man cave, a man cave. Man cave. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why I'm asking is because you are creative, and the thing about creatives is they usually need their me time. Mm. So I, if you don't have a man cave, then I would like to find out how do you because th that would mean you want to have time to create your music, to think about what to do, and you're going to need time mm. for yourself. So you don't have a particular place you go to, and you're like, you know what? This is the time for me to create music, to think about what I want to do. No, I, I am very open. I, I have a, a sound engineer, Tim Othokia, the gentleman you saw. Mm. I, anything musical I share with him, I tell him this is what I think. This guy will tell you, that sounds like shit. <laughs> <Don't>, <laughs> or, I think I like it. I, I like his honest opinion when it comes to my work. Like, He's this person who will tell you, I don't want you to sound like that because you're going off. This is what we've been creating. And if you do this, but there are people who say, hey, you sound good also here and there. Then you start to confuse the people who are following you. So I share my ideas. I'm not selfish. I love to know what people think about my sounds, my ideas, because I don't believe in doing everything by myself. I believe everyone's opinion matters. I might listen and never take it, but at least I listened. Mm. And I could choose to pick something that would help mm. take me somewhere. Okay, but you, you have a family? Yes, I do. 
how do you balance between what you're doing and then family time? My family is part of my job. My family, the good thing is I do most of my work from home. Mm. So my family is close to me. When it's time for my family, it's time for my family. When it's time for music, it's time for music. And my family respects that. They know who I am, what I believe in. And uh, I mean, finding happiness for the family, this is done together with my wife, my children. We have our time, mm -hmm. which, which is very, you know, nice. Yes, uh, yeah. um, we have noticed most instrumentalists do play instruments because they are passionate about it. Yeah. But then we, we are thinking that we can make a transition from just it being a hobby, from it just being something that is that they're passionate about, and we transition to entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. where they can make money out of it. Because if it's something that you love, then why not make money out of it? How do you think they can best achieve that? I think the most important thing is how you package yourself. How do you present your product to people? Who are you? That is all the hard work I was talking about. You need to build that from scratch, from nothing. Because you teach people what you believe in and where you want to go. When I started Janzi, not so many gave me a chance because I was working with a, a young team, which I still have because we've not grown you know, so much ahead of each other. But because it was that young age and people are like, I see this band can stand for because they're young, money is going to you know, divide them, A, B, C, D, there's so many reasons. But once you know what you want to do, you trust your people. Trust me, nothing is impossible. Most people get excited about different things. I work on a sound and that's what I'm going to stay for. If you choose to go for everything that you listen to, you're going to confuse people. And before you know it, someone is going to call you someone's name. Mm. Because they're not seeing a video of you playing. They think, this guy sounds like this guy. Then you're losing it along the way. So for me, if there's a vision, and you have people that believe in a vision, you build a vision together, you work on your package or the product you want to give to people, trust me. You will have people who believe in that and people who will not believe in that. It's okay. It's okay. We have preferences. Let them go to what they believe is nice for their ears. And those that trust and believe in what you're doing, we will stay build on from that. Even if you have one person, that person is enough to make noise, to make two, to make mm -hmm. three. And before you know it, you have thousands of people following your work. Mm -hmm. And that's how we build Janzi. I did not build Janzi because I had superstars. I've never believed in superstars. I believe in teamwork, unity. If you are a superstar, hell no. We're going to do this, we're going to walk through that door, and that's what we're going to do. If you think otherwise, then we can't do it. Because along the way, you're going to feel like you're doing us a favor, yet we are working as a team. If we're going to dig a hole, all of us have to be part of it. Mm. That's, that's my philosophy. Mm. Uh, are there specifics to this is how you should build your maybe um, your career or profession as an instrumentalist? I, I, I don't think there's a formula to that. For me, I think is it's about identifying yourself as a musician. What do you want to do? What do you want to give to people? Because people will not tell you what to give to them. Mm. It's as simple as that. Because if I come to you and I want to work with you, I must have a plan or an idea I'm sharing with you. If you don't believe in it, I'll either stay and listen to you and work out a plan that you think we can bring together, or I'll move on to someone else who might listen. I can even work with you, and along the way, you don't feel this is working out. Mm. Usually that happens, but the right people will come, and they'll stick around. Mm. So it's about, if you are the vision bearer, you know what you want, present it to the people you want to work with. If you want to go solo, present your act to audiences and see what they think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so in this, I should call it part of the world of instrumentalists, uh, one teamwork is very important, but then also having a vision yeah. for what you are doing yeah. is equally as important yeah. and sticking to it. Yeah. 
and I believe from there then because money will always come but when you get people to believe in you because you've believed in yourself then it makes the whole process a whole lot easier yeah okay uh, you see some people some people sorry some people uh, think money is the most important thing trust me I tell people if you're still looking for money in this business you're in a wrong place do the right things money will follow you because mm. if I chase for money it's like if I call the media house and say, I want you to, I want you guys to do an interview with me. And then someone is going to say, how much are you paying? I don't believe in that thing. Mm -hmm. For me, if a media house is like, hey, we want to do an interview with you about your work. We like what you do. I'll be happy. Because then that means I have worked so hard to convince you mm. to pick up your your phone and call me and say so we want to do A, B, C, D. I've seen people who do these things pay. Mm. I am paying you to write wrong things about me because I want you to sell me and you see that will not stick around for that mm. much yeah, that's true. time. Mm. It will fade. Mm. But if you look for my work because you've had and you feel it is really good, I am proud of myself. Mm. I'm proud, I'm not, I, I can never be proud of paying for an article that I know that's not true. Mm. No. Okay. Um, we've had people that have begun and are uh, very interested in being, they're very passionate about being instrumentalists and they're doing an amazing job. And then along the way they feel like this thing is not really paying off and they've switched careers. Um, what do you think causes that? Maybe they're not patient enough. Maybe they're greedy. Because <laughs> Everything good or everything nice takes time. Mm. Trust me. Mm. It has to take time. Rome was never built in one day. Mm. You have to build something around you. I was a nobody. Today you wouldn't be here if I have not taken time. Zanzibar has been around for 10 years. That's a long time. 10 years. Mm. And I cannot say 10 years. It has always been, you know, a flat fall of things. In 10 years, there's a band there's an instrument, we have a studio. We're working on so many things. We, we have a Janze Extra, you know, where we give other artists a platform to come and do their work. Uh, we have a charity organization, which, which is Janze for Hope. In 10 years, I have a daughter called Janze. Mm. So, there's a lot that has been built. And there are people who not stick around in the first year or two years, mm. maybe. And you, you can't blame them. They had their own visions and mm. you respect their decisions. But sticking around for this long and still going, I mean, you need commitment. You need a big heart to do mm. that. And some things are not meant to. If some people left, they left because they were not meant to stick around for that long. You respect that. Mm. but. To musicians today, some of them are looking for quick money and that destroys a lot because mm. that money will come and tomorrow you don't have it. You will want more. But if you stick around and say, you know what, this is the direction I want to go into, you face that direction and take it, trust me, it's all possible. Mm. It's possible. Uh, you seem to be a very well-traveled person. Mm. Um, and. With travel comes a lot of exposure. Mm. How has that exposure helped you with your music? I have learned a lot. I've learned to connect with other cultures and understand the global sound. So one of the reasons as to why Ugandan music is not crossing borders is because we have chosen to create music for Ugandans, mm. for Uganda. I'm sorry to say so, but I love to speak facts. Nigerians are crossing borders even to our country because they have sat back and listened to sounds and have chosen to take a direction which connects the world. And so those are some of the things that we're missing. So for me, coming back, working with my sound engineer, we talk about different things. We listen to different sounds and say, how do you create something that sounds like this? But we still have that attachment from home that we can still describe ourselves as we're from Uganda. We don't lose that element. 
We need to learn every time we travel. Mm. Some people travel for the sake of traveling. I travel to learn and pick a leaf from wherever I've gone. When I come back, I want to share with the world. That's why, if you listen to my sound, it might not be that sweet to the ears of Ugandans, but it's a sound that can be listened to globally. Mm. I noticed it has a bit of folklore. Yeah. And it's relaxing mm -hmm. for me. Uh, do you write your own music? Yes. Yes. I do my own music. Some of my music is about who we are, where we come from, stories, you know, how we grew up. Because for me, I love to describe where I come from. So the music I'm doing has to have a story that I am not only playing music for you to enjoy, but it's also educational to the audience that I'm telling you about me and where I come from. Because once you realize people don't know where you come from, you have to take up that task to teach them. So it's, for me, I'd rather do a song that will talk about Uganda than a song that will talk about love, because everyone is saying about love mm. across the globe. Mm. It depends on what kind of love we're talking about. But talking about my country first, I am describing where I come from, and I'm proud to do that. Wow, awesome. How has your music been received to the countries that you've traveled? Most people ask me if they know me in Uganda. And I say, yeah, maybe they do, maybe they don't. But it's all about knowing me where I come from. It's about doing what I think is right. It might not make sense today, it will make sense tomorrow, because I'm inspiring someone who's going to pick up that good work I'm trying to do. And then, I mean, it will make sense somewhere. The musicians, you might never know, but had a very big impact mm. on some people's music carriers. That they have to talk about it and you Google about them, mm. then you get to know, oh, this guy did A, B, C, D. So for me, I need to, you know, there's that, I want to be effective to my audience, to communities, as opposed to being a superstar. I need to mean something to people. Mm. Because for a superstar, you can always pause for everything. But what am I doing for communities? Mm. For me, I just want to be effective. Mm. Yeah. So your music, you'd rather it's for people? Yeah. Okay. Um, who inspires you? My father and my mother. Your father's name is? The late James Wachiranga, senior. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he also used to, do that, was that, was, did he, uh, major in music, did you focus yeah. on music? He was a drummer, mm. playing traditional drums. He traveled the world, did everything, played state functions all over. And my mother is a dancer, so these are my, these are people I look up to. I grew up seeing them. I always wanted to be better than my father. I had the chance to play with him. I had the chance to at least brag mm. and tell him I'm better than you. Mm. I play more instruments than you do. So it was fun. I mean, I, I don't have a better superstar in my life than my father and my mother. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of uh, the, the many instruments that you play, you play instruments from almost all over Africa? Most of the instruments I play are from Uganda. The other instruments I play are from Africa, that's the Mbira. From which country is the Mbira? That's uh, from Zimbabwe. Okay. I play some bit of the Ngoni from Mali. I can try to play the Kora, not a superstar, but I love to concentrate on where I come from. Mm. Yeah, and more especially the Janzi, which I I think is my favorite instrument. I designed it, I created it, so that's my instrument mm. that I play. Um, how did you, I want us to speak more about the Janzi, how did you come sit down and come up with the specifics of this is what it's going to be, the skills are going to be like this, and... That's a long story, God. That's a long one. You know, this story comes all the way from 2014 at Copenhagen Airport, where we were, I was with a, a friend of mine who refused to have this Adungu on board because the Adungu had nails, so it was considered a security threat. Mm. It was quite embarrassing, but I mean, it was true. These are nails. They could be dangerous to someone. Mm. But you know, returning home, this thing was in 
rolling through my head all the time. And then 2015, I had this adungu. I play the adungu. So I had the adungu with a broken neck. So I called the carpenter to help me and asked him, can you get me a neck that we can re that can replace this? He said, yeah. So he went to pick a tape measure. And uh, when he came back, I told him, no, we're not going to fix this adungu. We're going to build a complete new adungu, which we did successfully. It was a beautiful instrument. And from that point, I... I was never going to call the Adungu my instrument. It has its own history. Mm. So I thought of an instrument with two sides. And then I told this guy, we're going to build an instrument with two sides. And this guy was like, are you crazy? I said, no, I'm not crazy. We're just going to try something. Let's see how it works. So we put together an instrument. At that time, I was staying with a friend of mine. He's called Trevor Mohumza. He's the music director at Jamsa Band. Mm. And I was asking him, so how, I am thinking of an instrument that has two scales. I don't want it to sound like the Kora. Mm. Like, okay, how does the Kora sound like? like? Well, I don't want us to even listen to it, but let's create something that. And he was very interested in doing so. And we did. Um, we built a very beautiful instrument. And then there was a point we wanted to give the instrument a name, like, what do we call it? I have a friend of mine who is in, uh, in the U.S. He told me, we are drinking, we're having fun, just enjoying our time. He's like, you want to give the instrument a new name? Like, I don't know. What do we do? He's like, I think you should call it Janzi. I said, why? Because you already have Janzi band and you don't want to start dividing your brains. Mm. So just leave the name going. Like, okay. I think that's a nice one. So we chose to... So I've always had people around me who suggest, and I listen to them. That's why I say I'm not selfish. I listen to my people, my friends, what they suggest to me. I can't say everything I've done, I've done by myself. I've had people who help me out. I listen to them, they give me their opinions, which I respect. So I can't say naming the name, the, the Janzi was from my head. I, that would be a lie. Someone was like, name it that. So that's how we came up with the Janzi. The instrument has been patented. Uh, we have a uh, copyright to it. Okay. The first Ugandan instrument mm. to get a copyright. Whoa. Patent. Yeah. <laughs> but this instrument is not for me, it's for the nation. That's why last year, around Apple, we launched the instrument at the Campara Serena. So we let the instrument out. But we still have a lot of work to do. The biggest number of Ugandans do not know. And it's not about this instrument at Zanzi. It's about all instruments that come from this country. We still do not know where they are, where they come from, why they have not, you know, changed. You see the Adung, you look at the Adung and say, okay, I was born with this instrument looking like this. I have grown into a man, the instrument still looks the same. But we want to compare ourselves to the rest of the world where guitars keep changing. Mm -hmm. There's a new jitter. Mm. There's something added. For me, I think that's the reason as to why we're never moving. And if someone does not start that, that's the end of it. Mm. That's why we see around, we talk about, we talk less about our culture, more than the Western culture, the modern culture. And then you keep asking people, what's the modern culture? And no one can give you a clear answer about that. Mm. It is going to have to start with us. I want to use the, uh, the, the Janzi to spearhead the development of other Ugandan instruments, mm. specifically Ugandan instruments. Mm. Yeah. Something that we can look at and say this, with, with, with the label that says made in Uganda. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so there are other, so if I wanted to buy a Janzi, I can get yeah. it. Where do we find them? Here. Where exactly? Here. Where, in where, where, see the Janzi. <laughs> that's where everything starts and ends when we're talking about Janzi. For now, I mean, we've not gone that big. We're still, you know, putting up structure and see how we can grow this whole thing. The thing is, I'm doing this on my own with a few friends around me. It's not like you have these other, you know, bodies come together to try and push you. No. Mm. Everything, you have to finance everything, you have to think about everything. I mean, in other countries, there's money that comes into culture and it really goes into culture development. <laughs> In this country, I don't know where money for culture goes to. 
<laughs> well, that's a discussion for another day. But we need to talk about these things because mm. we we love our country, and when we go out there, we feel bad when other people talk about only politics. Not mm. all of us want to talk about politics. That's there true. are so many things that builds a country or a mm. nation. Mm. You understand? Mm. And maybe there are so many people that will build so many of their careers off these instruments. And we've not given them a chance to. And something has to be done. Okay. So you're probably thinking, I need to get myself a Gen Z instrument. It is right here in the Gen Z studios, the Gen Z home. Yeah. yeah you will come and... So do you train? Yes. We train all kinds of instruments. Um, I won't say specifically at the Gen Z. You come with whatever you want to learn. We'll give you someone to teach you that because, I mean, as Janzi, we play a wide range of instruments. Mm -hmm. So you can't say people will only come here to learn the instrument. You give people a chance to experience other things mm -hmm. and connect what they've come knowing and what they will learn from here. So we teach, we're open to sharing different ideas or knowledge. Okay. Uh, do you think uh, this legacy, is, is it a legacy that you're leaving for your children? Are they showing any interest in... Well, it's not about my children, it's about the nation or the country I come from. My children might never want to play this instrument. They might want to be lawyers or engineers. I don't have a problem with that. Mm. I'm living my life. They'll live their lives. Mm. That's a good one. You should all pick it up. <laughs> uh, so what would you say to other instrumentalists out there? Well. For the instrumentalists, the young ones, identify who you are, what you want to do, stick to that, practice every day. Know where you want to go. That's very important. You know, excitement comes along the way, things that will distract you, but once you stick to what you want to do, that's it. Do that. You may not have the, the answers in the shortest time you've set up for yourself. Maybe in the longest time you will. We, we, we know musicians who have taken 10, 15 years to actually discover who they are and then they make it in the world mm -hmm. and they've never called life hell. They kept going. So that's what I think we should do. That's for us as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're going to play for us some of the instruments? You want me to play? Yes, but before we do, I just want to, I would like to remind you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet and hit on the notification bell so that each time we post a video, because we now do it every once in a week, you get an instant notification that the video has arrived. So, but thank you so much for taking off the time to watch. We really do, do appreciate. Thank you so much. And now I leave you with the man himself, Sewa Sewa.